Hi guys, welcome back. It's UK here with another vid. Um, this is a response to two videos by Sam OG. Um, basically, they are uh, the roles of the games master and the roles of players in roleplay games. Um, and I've tried several times to do this vid, and each time it just sort of goes wrong. <laughs> um, either I don't feel that I'm getting the point across properly or I feel I, I, I either come across like a control freak or I'm being a bit of a, an arse towards Sam OG. Neither of which are accurate. I'm just finding it a very difficult uh, set of topics to actually talk about. Um, so I'm just sort of going to go for it. Um, hopefully, from that intro, you realise that I'm, you know, not trying to be an arse and I'm not a control freak. But first off, if you haven't seen these two vids, go over to Samuel G's um, YouTube page, watch these two vids because they are quite thought provoking. They are, you know, they're good vids. They're a good topic. Um, the problem is. I think I'm the complete opposite, uh, the polar opposite, in fact. Um, and I think the reason is that, uh, and I hate to use these particular terms, but I think the problem is that Samuel G is new school and I'm old school. Uh, because Samuel approach is very much the uh, um, the games master. There's too there's too much emphasis on the term master in games master and dungeon master. Uh, and that this sort of um, you know some of that power belongs to the players. Um, as I recall from the vids, uh, it's been a few hours since I watched them. Now trying to do the repeat versions of this. Um, he would like to see more uh, immersion from players and uh, again I'm loath to say power in the hands of the players uh, but it's certainly like from what I gather to see more uh, of the descriptive element come from players um, and for my point of view, uh, from my experiences and, and, and my time DMing, I find that I'm a complete opposite sort of point of view. The GM's role, that role, the games master is the person that organises the campaign, they organise the adventure, uh, you know, they're the ones who are going out and spending money, you know, they're paying blood, sweat, tears, money you know, time and effort into producing all this. And, you know, they are the ones who make the decisions. It's a collaborative process. The players and the games master, they all are collaborative storytelling. But there's a reason why you have a games master, and that's because somebody has to take charge. Somebody has to be the person to say yes or no. Somebody has to be the one to say this is what happens. You know, I'm telling a story. And the five of you sitting at this table, you're the players. You've got your own characters that fit into the, the campaign world. You've got your own personalities for them. You've got your own quirks. You've, you've, you've built the characters you want. You're here to A, have fun. That's the reason we're all role playing, let's be honest. Uh, B, you're here to tell that story. You know, because what's the point of having all these adventures and the GM spending all this time and effort if you're not going to tell the story? You know, that's what you're here for. You're here to have fun, tell the story, be the heroes of legend, to make your own myths and and and, and have memories that you're going to treasure for the rest of your life. Um, I'm waffling again. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> um, you know. There's some things that players don't need to do, and one of them, I think, is to do... 
I'll give you an ex I'll give you an example. There was a really good example on the YouTube page for the uh, oh, sorry on the Facebook page for the YouTube RPG game where uh, somebody and I'll paraphrase this because I can't remember exactly how it goes. They had an example where uh, a character walks into a bar and they approach the bar and they you know call out to the barman something. Somebody at the table nearby throws open their cloak as, or their trench coat as they stand up and up comes the shotgun and now I'm going to get you sucker and blam. And the player decides they're going to throw themselves over the bar to escape the shot. Um, but the player describes the outcome. They describe the glass shattering and the wood splintering and the bottles on the back, you know. All well and good. Don't have a problem with that. Don't really have a problem. But the descriptive comes from the GM, not from the player. The player obviously has input. Uh, you know, they might say, and this again comes to uh, something else that Selma G points out, where he says players shouldn't ask questions. Well, I think players should always ask questions. That's how they get where they're going. You know, the player leaps, says he's leaping across the bar, but he goes, is there a bottle of whiskey on the bar that I can grab? And the GM goes, yeah, of course there is. I agree with that. Because then they've got options. You know, they can stand up and smack the guy over the head with the bottle if he's close enough. They can, you know, stand up and quickly pour it over the bar or spray the guy with it. Uh, or better yet, they could go, right, I'd grab uh, a, a dirty rag, you know, stuff in and light it, you know, ready to, to again, throw it at the guy or, or, or cause distraction or whatever. That's what the players do. The GM gives the description, the players take it and they run with it. You know, um, that's how it should work. The GM's role is to tell a great story for the players and with the players. It's 60-40 in favour of the GM. Let's put it that way. They don't get the overall say of anything, but the, you know they have the they have the veto, as it were. They do the hard work, and the players can focus on their characters and telling the story. Okay, that's my th you know quick thought on GMs. Then it comes to the player side of thing, and this again I think is where I again lots of again sir. Um, I'm the opposite of Samuel G because he's very much, from what I gather from these vids, to be an immersive role player. You know, you have this character and you don't sit down and just play. You sit there and you become this character. You talk in character and uh, everything you do is in character. Um, and you don't deviate out of character. You don't talk game mechanics, you know. And I see this from a few other people, you know, um, in the brigade. Um, um, you know, this is where I feel like I'm going to be an arse to people because I'm just going to turn around and go, no, you know, if that works for you, <laughs> then fine. Because this is, you know, to, to be a little bit cliche again, all our games are different. Every group is different. You know, uh, whatever, whoever the players of the group that Samuel G play with, they're completely different to mine, who are completely different to, um, so many people, you know, to another group, you know, to Tim's group or whoever, you know, they're all completely different, you know, um, but I don't think that immersive play is the default, uh, it's called a role playing game and my emphasis, well the emphasis for me is on the term game, that's the important bit, we're there to have fun, which is what I said a few minutes ago, uh, if, you know, I find for, for me, um, and I'm sure I've spoken of this before, part of the enjoyment of playing a game like Dungeons & Dragons is that you, you, you become this other persona. You don't need to be Amdram, you don't need to be immersed, you can just be this other persona. Even if it's just a version of you, you know, or you know, it's just me, Colin, in this fantasy world, but I'm a fighter or a sorcerer or a cleric or whatever, and I'm playing me in that role. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't need to be fully immersed in a character. Um, I appreciate I'm waffling again. Um, you can just play. And I, and I actually get some enjoyment out of, you know, rather than do this as, I, as a couple of my gaming buddies have started doing from their PFS time. Oops, sorry for that. Um, where they start doing, you know, monsters and NPCs are 
uh, suddenly they're physical and then they're critical to describe well, just for goodness sake just you know all right the gm's not going to tell you anything but they kind of they look at it in the same way the player goes oh i'm i'm how are you i'm, I'm physical i'm critical no you just go i've got four hit points left <laughs> you know or um damn it the medusa's in there who's got the best fortitude save well the fighter has well send the fighter in that sort of thing is all part and parcel of the game you don't need to be immersed in it you know you can use that certain small amount of metagaming to make the game well for me it's more fun to do it that way I, I, I don't like immersion too much um, uh, uh, yes fi final final bit on this because um, it's dragging a little bit now I do apologize um, one of the things and I, and I have to admit I, I, I did get really if I could gnash my teeth at this, I probably would have done. Uh, he talks about, and I appreciate he's not being, um, what's the word? Uh, oh, I'll just get on with it. I, I know, I know what he what he meant. But he talks about if you're going to play a certain sort of character to research that character, if you're going to play, I think he used the, uh, the idea of an astrophysicist. Uh, then look up this sort of stuff that you can actually play that character again this falls to me under immersion the it's, it's good if players want to go and research this stuff Th thumbs up to them bonus points you know but i think the concept of saying that a player needs to reference this stuff to research whatever they're playing you know rather than the gm tell them what they f you know what they find the gm can give them you know something and then they run with it because they know what they're talking about suddenly you know at least on a uh, on a layman's level, but I find that that's a little too much. You know, w <sighs> once upon a time, we all could have done something like this. But you know, these days we have lives, we have other things we want to do in our time. You can't always do it, and you shouldn't have to do it. And this is right what I was trying to get earlier. He wasn't saying you have to, but it would be nice if players could get a little bit more into whatever role they're playing. Um, But I think it's the G. It comes back to what I said earlier. This is the GM's job, the GM's role, to tell you what you find. If I'm playing an astrophysicist in a game, um, you know, modern day Call of Cthulhu or something, I don't know. Um, I, all right, it's, it's it's something I have a very minimal knowledge of because you know I'm a geek and I like my sci-fi and I like you know space and everything else, so I know a little bit of some of this, um, but certainly not enough to ever feel confident enough to you know at a table or anywhere else to start spelling it. This is what the GM tells me. If the GM's got a certain sort of something in their game, they tell me when I make my role, or if it's you know that easy enough knowledge, they'll just tell me. Um, and I think this is what I mean by old and new school. It does seem that since, and I'm going to put it since about the release of third edition D&D, because that seems to be when I first noticed it. So we're talking ten, uh, 12 or 13 years ago. Players suddenly seem to, you know, and I think it's because we've had the old guard, as it were, of either... Uh, shall we say retired from gaming you know their 40s 50s 60s they've you know they've put their books on the shelves and you know they're just getting on with their lives um you know not everybody stays in the hobby but now we've got new bl bodies coming in new blood and i think because of how maybe it's just how times have changed they are looking at the player wants an ex that extra little bit they want some control over the game and so the GM's role is being slowly shifted in favour of the players oh well, no that's not entirely true I want to say in favour of the players but it's more the GM is no longer being the game's master as G uh, Samuel G puts it you know the master is, is kind of too much it's irrelevant now and I think this is something that I find that I don't like. Not because I'm a, 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 a I was going to say power gamer, that's wrong. Not because I'm a control freak or anything like that. 
but I do believe that there are certain things that the GM is meant to do and there's certain things the players are meant to do and that's kind of it you know players be players and let the GM guide you through the story you dictate where it goes you can you know you can come up with some cool ideas you can you know suggest things you know don't be afraid of putting your hand up and going is there this, this is there this can I do this you know um, and likewise GMs while I'm not a fan of the the idea of the games master which can find a way to say yes to everything I'm more a fan of saying of the GM going no but dot 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 you know compromise come up with something um, hopefully you know oh, I do appreciate that was a, a fairly cool, cool quarter of an hour waffle um, hopefully that gives you an idea of what of my sort of point of view I think it's a very interesting topic it certainly is for the idea of where what players roles are and what the GM's roles are but I, f I prefer the traditional roles um, for role playing um, and just remember that it's a game first and foremost immersion which is one of the biggest problems that I s uh, not problems but the biggest issues that I see isn't that important just play the game and have fun and have you know that's what it's all about anyway I'm, I'm going to let you go because otherwise I could sit here for hours and just repeat the same old stuff but thank you Samuel G for two really good topics it's it's a tantamount amount to why you know they are so good that it's taken me you know all this time to finally be able to put it waffly into words um, so thank you very much and you know even if you disagree you agree whatever I'd like to know and certainly let Samuel G know on his vids so thank you all for watching and I hope your games are good and 2014 will be a really good year for all of us in our gaming so thank you, take care and goodbye.